Hey guys, welcome back to Kumasao. We're taking a look at the latest from Fans Hobbies. Their Master Builder series, which is their Masterpiece Scale toy line, uh, MB18 Energy Commander. So this is really cool. This is the third Unicron Tril Trilogy toy that they've done. They've done Meg Tyrano, which is Armada Megatron, Naval Commander, which is Armada Optimus Prime, and now Energy Commander, which is Energon Optimus Prime. So, really cool, and I'm excited to see what they've done with this in person. Tons of pictures online of it and stuff like that, but the cool part is they took one of the lesser desired, yeah, the least desired Optimus Prime molds and made it into something that's really cool. Changed up the kind of fatty aesthetic, streamlined them and stuff like that, so yeah. I haven't even taken it out of the box yet, so we're going to go ahead. I don't normally do unboxings during reviews, but you know what? Why not? Looks like it's pretty clear cut inside of the package. I don't want to take too long on this, but again, why not? Since I go over all the accessories and stuff like that anyway. Zoom out some here. Alright. And I do like with the box that they really try their hardest to emulate the original Energon Unicron trilogy or the Armada packaging. Yeah, I can't wait till they get to Galaxy Force, man. So here he is, comes in alt mode, done back there. Get the tape off of the clamshell here, or at least break it. Boom, boom, boom. Oops, there. Right, there's a trailer. Optimus. Blaster. And there's a lit orange plastic piece. I don't know if that's a screw cover. I'm going to guess it's on one of the limb vehicles. Because one of those is colored orange. But... Boom. Boom. Get the box back here in the shop. Alright, and there's another piece of paper in there I'll take out in a second. I don't know if that's maybe electronics or just some additional instructions. I don't know what it is, but unboxing, that's the gist of it. Alright, now we got it all unboxed, and what it all comes with is, of course, Energy Commander. His vehicles that go inside of the trailer, or you can have them displayed outside however you want to do that. We got this blaster here, and that piece of paper that was kind of crunched up inside of the box is a sticker sheet, and if you know this channel, you know that we do not fuck with stickers here. If you're new to this channel, now you know, we don't fuck with stickers here. I don't really like them if it's not tampos, an example of a tampo would be like the number four here on this vehicle, something that's painted, water sluts, I guess water slid, whatever you want to call it, just looks a lot more natural and stuff like that. I'm just not into stickers, just, yeah, the aesthetic of them and stuff like that, not for me. If you like them, cool. I just won't accept anything you're selling that still has them on there. Repo label your stuff up all day. But anyway, the four vehicles here, his blaster, his car, stickers, and of course, the instructions. Let's get going. And just taking a look at each vehicle one by one. First off is the literal number one vehicle. There's a crane, plastic wheels, rolling. Not too crazy much there, but what's really cool about this one is that it has a joint there, has a joint there, and that also extends. All right? And then, of course, 
Look at itself moves up and down. Number two vehicle, the helicopter. Same with that. Not too much to it. It does have rotating propellers, but it's a pretty tight joint, so it doesn't have that free spin that a lot of helicopter figures do. Alright, that excavating type of vehicle. Big drill on the front. Drill does rotate. Again, like the propeller on the helicopter, no free spin or anything like that, so that's unfortunate. But it does have actual rubber treads, which is impressive. Really surprised they went there with it. But it's pretty neat. And they actually work rolling it on a surface too. Okay, number four, the submarine. I mean, there's not really much to this, no moving parts or anything like that. And, of course, Energy Commander Optimus Prime himself. Even on the original toy, I actually like the cab mode. On the original toy, I like the cab mode a lot better than the robot mode. But, this also handles it really well. One thing I forgot to mention... Rolling rubber wheels, rolling rubber wheels on both Prime and the trailer. Now, to get this guy attached, it's very specific. If you look, it's kind of like sad faces, the pegs, and these line up. So, this flips up and down, and you find a spot. I hope I don't have to take this off camera, but it should be okay. There we go. Clipped in fine. Okay. Then the rotation. Now to get these vehicles inside of here, they just slide right in. And you see the gun clips into the side. Boom. And this is in the shape of this area here. The handle. Just pushes right on. Before I do that, these are numbered too. One, two, three, four. So let's get these open. Boom, boom. 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 Okay. So, vehicle one. Vehicle two. So, to get this form. Slides on it. Vehicle three. Make sure. Vehicle four. Is it? So, okay, I was wondering if I reached a limit in its turn, but let's try that again, because I'm pretty sure it has the ability to turn that way. I just don't think I had it pegged in tight enough. This is admittedly not necessarily a pain, but it's definitely trickier than it seems like it should be of the fact that this doesn't peg in super duper tight that area so what i'm going to do i'm turning it on its side so i can apply pressure from the more hollow bottom of the vehicle and then going from there um and it's just not wanting to play nice there we go Get the paint in nice and proper. Boom. 
But even there, you see because of the back versus that, it is going to hit. But it won't come off or anything like that. It pegs in very tightly. So. It's a really nice alt mode. But just to give you guys another angle, close this out. Boom. Boom. And just so you can see the other side, because they're not the same. This one's hollow. Okay, so the trailer is actually part of a modular system, which is really cool. Take off the wheels here. You just pull off. Boom. Boom. I'm going to take off the gun just because. Don't need it for that. I believe this just comes off. I've got a... Okay, so... The trailer is actually part of a modular system that you can assemble a variety of ways. But, really quick, because I had the darndest time figuring out how to get this thing apart. The wheels just pull out, but then it starts with, and then from there you just have to kind of pull the two trailer halves away from each other. So basically, they clip in to each other, like soft pegs. So the way you do it is kind of taking one side, angling it out. And you get kind of a snap apart like that. So we'll just put them in order. One, two, three, four. All right. Get these inside. Boom, boom, boom. I want you to take the trailer in half. These are just going to slide out those hitch pieces and stuff. But yeah. So now you have the option side by side. And these do peg together. Okay. So if you want to do it like that, they also can stack on top of each other. So snap the bag back in. Boom. Okay. See like so. And you know, I'm actually going to switch it. I'm going to put this one on top. Okay. So you can do it like that. Um, let's see if pegging these two. All right. Now, the cool thing about the two is that this part comes out, slide it out, and then you actually have a hanger for like a helipad. Oh. So, yeah, I mean, you got to take balance into account and stuff like that, so... Obviously, it's not the most stable like that. Um, I really don't know what people do to stabilize it. Because even in the instructions, it has something just like this. But, yeah, for me, it's kind of back heavy. So, I guess use at your own discretion. I will put some stuff back there just for the sake of... For the sake of review. But yeah, darken that uh, shade because on my screen, the helicopter's really blended into the background. Hopefully it looks better on video. But yeah, I mean, do as you choose with it. It's really neat. And not for nothing, when it comes to reassembling the trailer, I mean... It's modular, so you can put them in whatever order you want. Um, the two is kind of limited to being on this side because of this piece. It doesn't have the pegs on both sides like the other ones do. But what I do is there are female pegs up here. Kind of get them like so. Get the front first, and then the back just snaps in. And then for there, once you got the two sides together, um, you just press them together or whatever. Of course, you're going to have to... Like, put in this part first, as well as the hitch, but, yeah. I'm just showing you how to get the trailer pieces themselves, because it can be kind of tricky, and I got a feeling people are going to end up breaking these, because they snap on and come off so tightly. 
All right, and one more thing about the trailer, if you want to display it separately, like most Optimus Prime trailers, it does have a stand. It's right here inside of the hitch. Flip it out, and boom. All right, and here he is in his initial bot mode. This is where, I think, was it Fatimus Prime? Was that his nickname? All right, so it did a lot of work with this to make it more viable as a figure, but you can still see he's pretty wide in the waist. Uh, I've got him at just over eight inches tall, like eight and one sixteenth there. And he is in a pretty static straight up pose. He doesn't have ab crunch or anything like that. You see the kibble on his back there. Okay. Now looking at the articulation, head, it's on the ball joint, 360, it's got some rock there, some up and downward movement too, but he does have that in the back as well, just some kibble there. Looking at the shoulders, these do come up, the flap, alright, parallel. Not these ratchets right here are perfect, and it's crazy because they've gotten so much better with ratchets over the years that I wish they'd go ahead and just re release new ratchets or not re release, release new ratchets for the hips of Power Base to get it up to snuff with these newer figures. Like, so 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 good. Soft ratchets for this, and you can hear that nice click, and they're really small gaps in between, too, so you don't feel like you're missing out on any areas uh, any like areas of articulation so they do butterfly inwards and outwards the shoulders bicep swivel 360 double jointed elbows the wrist okay and then there's that okay now the waist no ab crunch no side to side it does 360. These flaps can actually move out of the way. But you got to work around the kibble and stuff like that, as well as this reverses for the skirt for the combined mode, too. There's a lot there. But yeah, it can 360, but with everything in the way, you're getting just past 45 degrees. And there is a different configuration, which we'll look at, too. Let's see if that adds some more articulation in that area. These front skirts do go up. Alright, now the hips, no drop down or anything like that that I'm seeing, so you're limited to that, unfortunately. Um, these back skirts do go up, but with this in the way, I mean, yeah, not much you can do. Some drop hips would really help there. Now, outwards. Okay. Great ratchets. This is friction, that thigh swivel there. The knee joint looks like a single joint, really small ratchets, and you get about 90 degrees right there, okay? The feet, up and down, same with the heel. The tilt is in the front part of the foot and the front part of the foot only, so the heels remain static, but at least it's something. I do want to see how he holds his weapon here. Okay. So the slot part is back there. So you can still put it into the hand, slide it down, and then grip it from there. So slide that in. Perfect. Okay. Okay, and of course there are a million and one figures out there that you could compare this to. I used the ruler, so just over 8 inches tall, about 8 and a 16th of an inch for this guy. But Meg Tirano, figured I'd just do a couple of Fans Hobby Unicron Trilogy figures. He measures at about 9 and 3 quarters to the tip of his head. Turn on the light there. And then there's Naval Commander, 
his base form, and he is about seven and three quarters inches tall. Just so you can see how he stacks up. Okay, so what we got here is each of the limbs in our mode. I'll put them in order. So one, two, three, four. Okay. And they all have the same articulation, that kind of deal. Make sure that this is actually transformed right. There we go. Yeah. And the joint here, it's like that because if you want to, like, they double as either side. And for the thumb, all you do, you raise it up, boom. Okay. So that's if you want it to be the right arm, left arm, reverse it, okay? Take the thumb, boom. Just look at two, the helicopter. All right. Three. Nice part about this one is that it can actually double up as a drill hand. That's the turn gimmick there. Okay. Four. focused the submarine all right so now we've got him in his combined mode the last piece to the puzzle is this missing chest piece here we've got it out it's lit up if you can see that let me focus here okay CR 927 cell battery the uh, positive side is this side here so Get that back into place. Just push it in. And it could come out with your fingers and stuff like that. So no need for a spudger or anything for that. The battery compartment itself, though, you might need one to get in there. So there's that. And just really quick, turn off some lights here so you can see the light itself. The way this activates is by pressing the back of this guy to it. All right, so the back of the gun, bam. And you don't have to touch it, just wave it over. So there's that. I'm trying to see because at times it goes out on its own. But then, it doesn't. So give it a couple seconds here. See if it does, see if it does. It is not, so... And that's a pulsate. And then off. So you basically tap it to go through the different modes and stuff like that. So, all right, now that we've taken a look at that, now the order I've chosen, um, just for the sake of a more cohesive aesthetic, at least one that's more cohesive in my opinion, is um, one, three, two, four. I don't like the drill as one of the legs. Um, I prefer just that like the drill hand wasn't here. I, it's just one of those me quirk things. Like even with Beast Wars Megatron, which is just one of the coolest Megatron designs out there, even the Transmetals 2 Megatron, I just like everything symmetrical. So it, it's hard for me, especially with limbs to get over aesthetically, but that's how the toy is supposed to go. And the drill is a really cool option. I do wish that as a hand, this came out a bit more because even sliding the thumb up and stuff like that, it's a little bit hard to get to, but it's kind of a first world problem. It's still very functional, okay? So we've got that, we've looked at the light. Let's take a look at the articulation on this guy. So the head, all right, it has rocking and stuff like that. And then the head itself, 360 so it's all on that one joint there okay arms no up and downward shoulder the exact same as the core bot mode the way that this goes on it just slides in okay 
And then we already looked at the articulation on the arms with 360 bicep swivel, 45 degree at the elbow. The wrist, do swivel. And I'm using this hand because it's like, if this one can do it all sunken in, the rest of them definitely can, if that makes sense. And then each of the fingers have multiple points of articulation. Okay. The waist, we have the same issue because the wheels are at the side again. So you're limited to that. Well, I'm actually getting a good 360 out of here. So I lied. So there's that. Okay. You just have to do some maneuvering, finagling, stuff like that. But it can get there if you want it to get there. All right. You just have to kind of loosen these side panels and stuff like that and make it work. Okay. The legs are going to be the same as bot mode. Which is unfortunate because I really do wish that there was a drop there. But I mean, it's what it is. And just so you know, the back skirts, they're both one joint. So both sides move at once. All right. So like right there, I was holding it and I started moving this side. I noticed it wasn't moving. You could break it like that. So yeah, there's that. Knees. That out of the way. Outward. Okay. Last swivel, same. And then ankles, we went over those already. So, just for the sake of getting them into something. Alright, so there's that. This sorts forward. Boom. Get that out of the way. I'm going to raise the camera up some too. Walking poses, I like, actually like those from above. If you look at a lot of comic panels and stuff like that, you'll notice that they're normally even drawn from above. And the weapon works the exact same. Extend the handle. And then I wish that there was a lock there. But you can obviously still make it work. Boom. I can look up some. Right. So I'm like something's blocking. So it can't like look up like a standard ball joint. And I don't see exactly what's blocking it. I think it's some of the stuff in the back, but that's kind of unfortunate. But we'll do what we can. Alright. bit okay all right and closing this part out just with the blast in the camera pose and I just found out because I put the gun in his hand first and I was like oh crap how am I gonna make this work and I thought maybe it's like Planet X's Cacus whose sword I happen to have right here and yeah it's a magnet so if you got the um, gun in his hand already don't feel like taking it out, being bothered with that. You can certainly just go ahead and use uh, another magnet. All right, but just for the sake of the picture, bam. And it's a good looking piece too. All right, I've got him here next to Naval Commander. I forgot to measure its combined mode. In that last section, he is about 10 and 3 quarters inches tall compared to Naval Commander's combined mode, which is about 11 and a half on the dot. So, 3 quarters of an inch difference there. Aesthetically, man, they knocked it out of the park with both. I do prefer um, Naval Commander personally, that's just me. But, I mean, for what they had to work with, not just with the original toy, but from the show design itself, I think they knocked it out of the park with Energy Commander. Um, I will say this, and it's one of those like preferential things or whatever, and I don't even have a real thought on this. Like, they're both pretty hefty. But I will say Naval Commander kind of edges it out in that. Um, with Naval Commander, you've got the really solid 
pieces from the trailer and stuff like that where this it, it's not hollow but it's definitely not as just thick as Naval Commander, and it's also a smaller figure in combined mode, too. But they've both got a good, hefty feel to them, too. Very premium. Um, I love that it doesn't feel like the plastic has any risk of degeneration or anything like that. I did not see a single weak spot on any hinge or anywhere in general when it comes to Energy Commander, so definitely buy this one with confidence. But anyway, let me know what you think of this in the comments lots more to come on this guy tons of pictures already being taken because i've been taking them in between sections of the review and stuff like that just to kind of knock out this mode that mode comparison stuff like that while i actually have it transformed but yeah man check that out on kumasawa.com link will be in the description when it's available like share subscribe and i'll see you next review